Hello, Internet! Welcome to the Arsenal! So, this video I've been thinking about doing for a while. This is basically just me showing the builds that I've used in the past several months since we started covering this game on here on the channel. And basically, whenever a new DLC comes out, I can easily finish the three maps really quickly, not because I've spent that much time, but because these are very, very effective in finishing those. And the more you, like, the quicker you finish things, the more you'll have access to some of the better stuff. Obviously, some people would prefer to savor the moment, and that makes sense. But for those guys, you could still get something out of this video, because this is kind of something that you could try to work towards when it comes to making your characters as strong as they can be. So the first thing I want to say, though, is most of the time when I... Like, I'm only going to show you, like, five of the characters, but that's only because with a game like Fire Emblem Warriors, there's, like, 25 people, and honestly, for all the time I've spent playing them, realistically, I've only ever used... Like, seriously ever used, like, five of them. And then I would use the other characters maybe, like, a dozen times before I would start making a video for them. Most of the time, I will be using certain characters that you'll be seeing me showing off in this video. Mainly just because I'm most comfortable with them. I prefer playing as these characters. And that's really the general rule of Fire Emblem Warriors. It says, pick the character that you like the most, invest in, like, super invest into all of them. That you like so much no matter what anyone thinks because it's just you playing anyway and uh yeah just have fun with that so basically the first thing i want to show off though would be liana the reason why i would recommend liana is because she is the, going to be the first unit that you'll ever get but also the fact is most of the restricted maps assuming that they're not like spears only or axes only liana would be able to be used in almost all the history mode maps especially the animations so Liana's a very powerful unit overall, probably one of the better sword users in the game actually. She's very, very strong. Like, don't let the fact that she's at the beginning of the game fool you, she is very good. And the thing about Liana, why I like her so much, is the fact that she has magic damage. So here's the thing though, she's a sword user, and the sword build that I can give to this character could hypothetically be given to any of the sword users in this game. And just feel free to change out whatever you think doesn't fit that character for your preferences. That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm gonna say right now, but this is what the build that I'm gonna be using for her Fasina. Now, before I actually get into this though, I'm gonna look at Rainstorm first. Now, someone actually commented, uh, and quite reasonably so, that I put a little bit too much emphasis on Rainstorm for all of my weapons. The reason why I do, personally, I can't really speak for everyone, but the reason why I like to have Rainstorm on all my weapons is that the majority of the time, like, the weapons, particularly this new one, 720 damage, like, this particular new weapon, it actually kills people before I can finish a combo, so I might as well make those inst instances happen a lot further. Most of the time, I find myself just doing a couple of regular attacks, dodge canceling, and doing some more regular attacks, so that's why I like having Rainstorm on her so much. As well, same thing goes for the strong, like, strong 4, strong 5, strong 6. I actually have started to sort of lean away from them as I used to, because we actually don't know specifically just how much damage they add onto the combos, However, for those of you guys that are playing right now, if you guys are finding yourself using certain combos more, then it will be a good idea to just add that weapon attribute onto your weapon because you are giving yourself passive more damage. So, yeah, like, that's all I can really say. Like, if, for Liana, I use Strong 5 on her a lot. Like, I would never trade away Strong 5 for anything. It is very, very useful for breaking gauges. It's very nice for dueling enemies because she can juggle them indefinitely. It's just a really, really fun move, so obviously I'm going to keep that. Topsy's Hervey works nicely on her, just because you give her magic damage instead. It will be a little bit tricky to kill priests and mages with Liana, but that's why I always like to pair her up with people, which is why we have pair up plus. As well, Bowbreaker, feel free to switch this with anything else, like uh, Draco Slayer, Swordbreaker would be pretty cool, Lancebreaker, uh, anything that tickles your fancy. Honestly, I'm just going to give her Bowbreaker for now until I can find something better. And Armor Strike is one of the best skills in the game, just due to the fact that you cut the enemy defenses in half. Even though you do run the risk on your own, it does sort of give an incentive to learn how to dodge attacks. I mean, it's not even that hard, just spam dodge and you should be okay. That's all I can really say right now. But yeah, that's gonna be Liana. Uh, again, Liana just, she is allowed on most of the maps, so I would actually recommend investing on her early on. And the builds that I have, I mean, except for Topsy Turvy, feel free to use this kind of build for other characters. We are going to be looking at another sword user, so just hold that thought. 
Now, in terms of her actual skill crest, though, she's a very decent skill and luck stat, and I feel like skill and luck are the most important offensive stats. So, Luna, Lethality, Astra, Luck plus 20, Trample, all very, very good. Feel free to give her either skill plus 10, or you can give her either Solidarity or Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf if she's only fighting by herself, and then, of course, Solidarity if you feel like you can switch between her and another character. So... Yeah, that's going to be Liana, very good unit overall, and she can also heal people, so if you ever make any mistakes, and if you feel that you have some, some close call moments with your allied base, then she will be able to heal them, so keep that in mind. Okay, so next up on my list, we're actually going to look at two units that I've been using, uh, more of an emphasis on one than the other, but it's going to be Lin and Navarre. So here's the thing, there's a lot of clone type enemies like I said earlier, and the movesets are exactly the same for these two characters, but it's a very, very strong moveset. It's one of the best in the entire game. And the thing is though, is that there's not much of a difference aside from the stat spread. Navar is very much so optimized. He is absolutely phenomenal if you want damage, but don't let that dissuade you from using Lin if you prefer to use Lin. The reason why I say this, I think someone else brought this up, and I'm glad they did, like, wouldn't, you know, like, wouldn't it be more important to focus on damage? And that's true. Like, it is important to have good damage because otherwise you're not going to kill people quickly. You will mess up your S ranking. But then, when you reach the point where you're getting S ranks very easily, it actually is more about what you would personally prefer. Like, if you prefer to, like, if you prefer the Lord moveset, for example, but you'd rather spend your day looking at Krom instead of looking at Lucina, well, then, like, then, then use, use Krom, then. He might have lower luck than Lucina, but that doesn't mean to stop using her. Sorry, him. Sorry. So that's the thing about Lin and Navar is that they're both incredibly powerful. Even if you, as soon as you reach late game, they will both one-shot everyone anyway, so... Like, it's just that Navar gets there a little bit faster, but they're both very, very good overall. So in terms of the actual moveset, again, just exactly the same as Liana. They have the same emphasis on skill and luck. Lethality, Luna, Trample, Luck plus 20, Astra, and then Lone Wolf or Solidarity, depending on what you would rather use. For the most part, if you guys are just starting off in your progression, you guys are like level... Like, from level 1 to 100, I'm gonna guess then I think Solidarity would be the better choice because you are switching between two people. It's better to have two people uh, for the most part. But then once you're more comfortable with that, feel free to give the Lone Wolf. That's all I can really say about that. So for the weapon, uh, I'm looking at the Wodao right now, but you, like the Soul Cassie is very, very similar to this one. They're both very similar, except that the Soul Cassie has a Draco Slayer built into it, which is quite nice. So I gave them the Warrior Plus because their Warrior Specials are insanely powerful. You will one-shot every enemy in the game at any difficulty with Warrior Plus. It's so good. As well, Swordbreaker, Fury Builder, Rainstorm. Of course, I already mentioned why Rainstorm is so important. When it comes to using Lin and Navar, their four regular attacks are very effective because you can just cancel that out. I, I'll put the uh, Navar video at the end of, the, of this one and you kind of just see how easily he can clean house with just regular attacks. It's so good. That's why I didn't even bother putting in the combo attributes because they don't need them. Yeah, there. So there's going to be Arbor Strike for obvious reasons, Critical Focus or Anti-Air Focus. Navarre and Lin can use both of these very well. It just depends on how you would rather do it. Critical Focus is quite nice, but it does make the game a little bit boring because of how easy everything suddenly becomes. But yeah, if you if that's what you want to do, then yeah, go for it. Don't let me stop you. But yeah, that's basically going to be it for Navarre and Lin, though. There's just, they're very powerful units, and they are someone that you'd want to build early on. So if you have the DLC, then get Navar as soon as you can, and then work towards getting Lin. You can also put them together and give them anti-triangle, so that, that could be fun too. But yeah, Navar and Lin. Okay, so one of the other things too that you'll notice is that it's actually required in certain maps to use spears. Now, there's not very many of them, but if you were going to main a spear user, then you might as well main one of the very best ones, and that's going to be Sita. The thing about Sita, why I like her so much, is that she has a really high luck stat, and thanks to the new stat flip ability, you can actually give her a really high magic damage. You can give her high resistance, um, and then flip that around so that that'll be her effective magic stat. She does quite a bit of damage. Again, just like with Liana, it'll be difficult to take down the priests and the mages, but she can make quite effective use of it. And again, because luck is so effective in this game, having Luna and Lethality is a very good idea. Personally, I would usually just run Solidarity on her, because I like to sort of pair her up with characters such as Camilla, 
just to help sort of with that synergy, the weapon triangle synergy, so to speak. Also, because of that new DLC that had come out, she gets a very, very good exclusive weapon. It is Wing Spear. It has the benefit of getting a maximum of three Slayer attributes, potentially three Slayer attributes, but on, on its own though, Rampager gives bonus damage to mounted units as well as armored units. So of course, stat flip topsy turvy for the aforementioned damage. Rainstorm, again, like, I, I'll just repeat myself over and over again if I have to. The reason why is because we don't end up finishing combos for a good amount of time, and sometimes it just is best time-wise to just cancel your auto attacks, sorry not auto attacks, regular attacks before going on to the next guy. Fury Builder is always quite nice on any of the flyers because they have large amounts of AoE and crowd clear. And Critical Focus, like, the Pexas Knights are quite good at breaking stun gauges, and Critical Focus just helps out a little bit more because they do juggle a lot, but some of these juggles can be a little bit janky. But uh, yeah, Lance Breaker, any Breaker attributes, I think Axe Breaker could be pretty cool because you do have a weapon disadvantage against them anyway. But uh, yeah, this is what I would use for any spear user. Obviously with Hinoka, it might be a little bit different. I would probably give her something more along the lines of like a Warrior Plus, Critical Plus. I could give them that, but unfortunately Stat Flip and Topsy Turvy does take up two. But I'd say it's totally worth it though. In my opinion, I'd say it was totally, totally worth it. But feel free to like sub out, like even the Rainstorm, you can feel free to sub that out for a Warrior Plus or Pair Up Plus, since we always are pairing her up with people. At least I do. So uh, yeah, that's Sita. Okay, so this one was a big surprise to me. I was not expecting to get any utility out of this character. Like, for those of you guys that saw the tier list video, I did not think very highly of him. But Xander has been getting buff after buff. Not directly to him, but to the different features that are available that would indirectly affect him. So it's, it's just crazy. So the thing is, he has one of the higher luck stats in the game. And he can make great use of that, either offensively or defensively. And building him defensively can be quite useful because if you give him Aegis, Pavis, uh, Soul, and Armored Blows, he will actually be able to sort of just hold down any fort that you want. Very useful overall, it's very difficult to take this guy down. And also, if you get the Opus weapon for him, then he's going to do some pretty insane damage just by running around doing strong attacks. So currently, I gave him a strong 1, Mount Slayer, Rainstorm. In terms of giving him combos, it's mainly just because I don't really see much reason to use him past just this area needs a little bit of help, he's just my emergency uh, my emergency option. If you want to continue using him though, feel free to pick apart the Liana and Navarre builds that I also have for those weapons and see what works best for you. But I give him extra combos just because that is going to be his main source of AoE anyway. His regular attacks aren't that good for AoE or... Um, just overall fighting, it's best just to spam combos. Armor Strike, thankfully if you give Armored Blows, the Armored Blow skill, to an Armor Strike unit, you are going to forgo any penalties to your defenses, it's really really useful. Mount Slayer can be quite nice as well, feel free to give him any Slayer, if you have a unique weapon with true power unlocked, you won't suffer any damage penalties if you apply the Slayer attribute. So, yeah, Alexander though, in terms of his skills, very useful overall, I mean, High luck is just one of the most useful things you can ever do, and honestly, whenever you do get a new unit or you are interested in trying out a unit, have a good look at their luck first. Obviously stats and what you personally prefer are two different things, but if you prefer to have like just more damage, then have a look at that luck stat first, it's very very important. But yeah, that's gonna be Xander though. He is he's on the arsenal not because I use him so much, but it's because I'm I'm finding him on my maps all the time, and I'm always parking him in the allied base just to make sure that I have a little bit more time to respond when it's my time to respond. And if you want, and if you like using him, then you can make him that unit that responds to any problems that happen near your base. So yeah, it's, it's just a nice win condition. Okay, so you, you guys saw this coming a long time ago, but it's it's Camilla. Camilla is my ultimate weapon. She is absolutely my favorite unit in the entire game. And it's really weird because, honestly, if you prefer using Minerva, then use Minerva because her stats are actually way better. But that's the thing, though. It kind of just encapsulates what I mean when I say just use your favorite. And Camilla is my favorite in this entire game for just so many reasons. She has amazing wave clear 
with her running strong attack. And honestly, you could just use that move forever and you'll be fine. But essentially, the thing about Camilla, why I like her so much, is that she is the reason why we've been able to finish these maps so quickly. Like, the, the average time for these maps are like three minutes at the most. It's really, really fast. Like, uh, that's kind of how I've done it, though. Whenever I get the new DLC packs, I always pair her up with a new unit, and then I would just run through all the maps, level them up as much as I can. When it takes a while, when the leveling starts to slow down for the other character, I switch to the next one, and then when I'm done clearing maps, I sell all the weapons that I've ever accumulated, and then I boost those three characters to level 100, and then I'm set. So that's essentially what it is with Camilla, is that she's great for farming support, she's great for uh, farming in general, anything that has to do with farming, she's good. If you want, the, if you prefer damage more than anything else and you're just starting out, Minerva is going to be a better option. She has more of an emphasis on strength, skill, and luck. It's just more. But yeah, for me though, like, you know, the fanboyism just kind of wins out. So, skill build, exactly the same. Like, this is just a pure emphasis on damage. You'll actually find that it's exactly the same across all these characters. Uh, feel free to switch out the Lone Wolf for Solidarity. But uh, in terms of her weapon, though, I've actually been laboring a lot over this weapon because I've been... This is kind of the, the weapon... This is kind of the guinea pig for all the weapons that I've been making and trying to figure out how this weapon system works. So, I've given her Critical Focus because Critical Focus means building... Um, killing those Sun Gauges a lot faster. Warrior Plus is quite useful on pretty much anyone. It's probably the best KO, 5000 KO skill out there right now. Fury Builder, she makes the best use out of Fury Builder out of any character just because of how fast her wave clear is. She is the best wave clear in the game. Now, I gave her the Rainstorm. So here's the thing about Rainstorm. Most of the time, I don't actually like using Camilla's combos. They're very slow. You can't dash cancel out of any of them. Like, even the, the combo 5 that I usually use most of the time anyway, I sometimes hate using that one. But, yeah, with Rainstorm, just attack a couple of times, dash cancel. When you're on a mounted unit, you kind of knock back your enemy so you can actually keep maintain the juggle. Instead of critical focus, you can actually give the anti-air focus, but, you know, that's beside the point. Strong 1, again, just running strong attacks. Armored Strike... Yeah, this is pretty much just, like, pure damage. She can handle pretty much any situation, and that's why she was at the top of the tier list when I uh, when I made that back in October. So really, like, if you want a good unit overall... I mean, you guys have seen me use this character a lot. I would continue to use this character forever. But, um, yeah, that pretty much does it for my little Arsenal video. It's, like, any of these movesets and any of these weapon combinations, these are the ones that I tend to go for, and you'll see why. As you're starting off in the game, starting off with strong 5, strong 4, and strong 6 on a weapon is fine. Uh, make sure that you prioritize building the unique weapons of those characters, because as you go through the history mode maps, you will be able to upgrade them, and that is going to be extremely important for when you want to take on bigger challenges. And honestly, I'm totally ready for the new DLC. It's only been like a week since the DLC came out, but... um. I, I can say that with these characters that I've already shown off in this video that I would be ready. And for those of you guys that prefer to savor them, yeah, like, just look at what we've done here, see if this works out for you, or uh, just, yeah, just think about it. Think think if this build that I have might use a little bit of adjustments that you would prefer to have, and just switch them out. Simple as that. Anyways, guys, uh, I was happy to share this, though. A lot of people have been asking about what skill builds I use. I, I, I tried to... I, I was actually considering just going over all the characters, but that would take up so much time. But for the most part, though, these weapon attributes are probably... Some of the ones that works best for me, obviously, people would want to experiment. But if you just want pure damage, then everything that you've seen here on this video would be the ones that I would personally recommend to you guys. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this super long-winded video. Man, this... Man, this took, this took a lot longer than I expected it to, but uh, yeah, enjoy, and I hope to see you guys next time.